Our scripture today is uh, from the book of Psalms, Psalm number 6. Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your wrath. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am languishing. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are shaking with terror. My soul is also struck with terror. While you, O Lord, how long? Turn, O Lord, save my life. Deliver me for the sake of your steadfast love. For in death there is no remembrance of you in Sheol. Who can give you praise? I am weary with my moaning. Every night I flood my bed with tears. I drench my couch with my weeping. My eyes waste away because of grief. They grow weak because of all my foes. Depart from me, all you workers of evil. For the Lord has heard the sound of my weeping. The Lord has heard my supplication. The Lord accepts my prayer. All my enemies shall be ashamed and struck with terror. They shall turn back in a moment to be put to shame. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today we continue our series on the book of Psalms, our our conversations with God. We've talked about different types of conversations with God, public conversations such as an oath, or a song of praise. We've talked about psalms which teach about God, and honest, all-too-human responses to the good things of our world. Today we continue into our real conversations with God. Just as the Israelites went a little too far in turning their praise into greed and bloodshed in a way that is far too common in our world, so too the Israelites Turn to God in times of trouble. Luckily for us, the Bible isn't full, isn't merely full of ideals and about humanity and rules of exactly how God wants us to be. That's in there, especially in the words of Christ, the Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes. But much of the Bible is written about the reality of, of being human and responding to that humanity with God. And there are even some stories throughout the Bible that tell of what happens when you respond without God. Our psalm today is the words of someone who is sick, gravely sick, even to the point of dying. These are the beautiful words of someone who is in intense pain, who is turning to God and requesting help. You may have noticed verse 1. O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your wrath. This is a a different theological worldview than the one we know today. It is a, a simplified worldview in which sickness is the result of an individual sin. This is dangerous theology. It's a theology which blames a person for an incurable disease. It's a theology which claims that a specific natural disaster causes specific people to be wiped out. This is a common theology for the book of Psalms. We understand differently today. We understand that bad things happen to good people and good things happen to bad people. We understand sickness as a symptom of a fallen world not as a result of an individual sin. Yes, we as humanity, we sin, and quite often. But that does not cause a specific cold or cancer. Those are a part of life in a sinful world. Even though our understanding of sickness and pain is is different than the psalmist, we can respond to it in a very similar way. The psalmist responds with lament an outward cry of grief and pain. Lament is an ancient art that we continue to use today. Now, they've been making fun of me all morning because I'm using movies that nobody knows, but I'm going to try again. Does anybody know the movie Across the Universe? I got one. Two. Yes. All right. Does anybody know the Beatles? Yes. Okay, we got a few more. Okay, so Across the Universe is a movie that came out a few years ago, um, and it is a musical based on the music of the Beatles. 
And it's the story of a, a, a group of friends in the 1960s as they go through, and they go through kind of all the typical things of the 60s. They're protesting, they're, someone goes to war, all of these things. And they use the songs of the Beatles to tell the story. Now, the director uh, used the specific song to kind of create a scene of lament. Who knows the song Let It Be by the Beatles? Quite a few of you. The scene, it shows two families as they mourn the death of a child. One child, a young man, dies in war. And another, a smaller child, dies in the warlike scenes of rioters in the streets of what I believe is Detroit. The song is begun, is the, the fir at first the young boy is singing the song um, almost as a prayer while he is hiding on the streets, hiding from the violence. He, and as he dies, the song changes, and in, instead of him singing any longer, it, the song is sung by the choir in his church at his funeral. It, this is a, a lament for all of those who, who died in these situations and follows the pattern of a group lament. It tells the truth about, about violence, and the violence specifically of, of the rioting and of the war. Lament is a form of truth-telling. When used as a group, it's a, used to tell the truth of a suffering of people of situations, of changes in life or of institutions. We lament what we lose. We lament a lost health, lost safety. We lament lost innocence. It is about being honest with God. The beauty of a lament is that we don't have to pretend that everything's okay, that life is always good and happy. Sometimes, life hurts. It, we grieve. We, we miss people. We lose. We, we get sick. We get fired. And we have to talk about it. Lament is the place that we can let go. Lament is where we stand in the midst of each other and God, and we say, sometimes I'm not happy. We can talk about our grief. We can talk about our fears. Every Christmas, this congregation holds a service of remembrance, specifically to respond to the grief of those who have died, had family members die in the last year. Other congregations expand that service to more of a, a blue Christmas service that acknowledges both the grief of death, but also the, the loneliness of mental illness, of frayed and broken relationships, of lost jobs or simply lost income, those situations in our lives that make the holidays not so happy. By using a time of lament to honestly speak of those times of loneliness and pain can open us up to finding new ways to find joy again. Because truthfully, if we ignore the pain in our lives, the joy does not come easily. Without the tears, often the laughter becomes hollow and false. Last week, we talked about praise and how important it is to praise God. Pastor Bob spoke about the Israelites praising God and speaking of God's goodness. He even got us to raise our hands and shout in our praise. Joyous praise is one of the most important parts of a congregational life. It brings us peace and happiness. It gives us a chance to love God openly. Praise, however, must go hand in hand with lament. If we're not honest with God and ourselves that we hurt, we cannot honestly praise God. Without lament, praise can be tainted with bitterness. Our praise becomes false and denies ourselves the fullness of our emotions, the fullness of our hearts. Have you ever met somebody who is happy all the time? Everything is always good and nothing bad ever happens to them. Now, do you believe them? That's often when we find somebody who's always telling us how happy they are. 
they're hiding something. They're not telling us of the specifics of a bad day or a bad situation. Somewhere along the way, the church sometimes gets like this. We forget that, that honest, honest truth-telling about the bad stuff is just as important about honest truth-telling about the good. The love of God is still with us when we are angry at God. The love of God is still with us when we are upset, when we're ungrateful. The love of God is so much bigger than our human responses to the world around us. Now, I'm not saying that constantly complaining to God is good. That's not true lament. That's really just complaining. Lament comes when our souls are hurting. Lament is often, about, often found without words. In our tears, our, our sobs, and just being unable to speak. Lament is our soul crying out to God because God already knows what we need and what we feel. And lament, it often leads to praise. Open lament and response to God leaves us open to honestly seeing the good in our lives. Speaking about the bad can open our hearts and minds into seeing the beauty of God's world and God's work in our lives. Just as praise without lament can be bitter and empty, lament without praise turns into separation from God. Even our psalmist today, he so trusted God that he turned his lament into praise. He declares that his illness will go away, his enemies will turn, and that God is listening to him. God is good at the end of the lament. And so our own grief, our own lament can follow this pattern, telling God, talking to God truthfully about how we feel and how we live, understanding our pain or sorrow, and then finding true praise in the midst of it all, finding that place where true happiness does come through, and showing it all to God, the good, the bad, all of ourselves. Let us pray together. Heavenly God, help us to come to you in our times of trouble. Help us to come to you in our times of joy. Let our conversations be our true selves interacting with you, not just who we want to be. In your precious and wonderful name we pray, amen.